Um, our next presenter uh, is a poutine enthusiast from Perth who is um, in the process of migrating to Vancouver who is going to be talking about PHP in 2013. Um, so to help us find out what that means, let's welcome Adam Harvey. I'm actually quite happy to shout, but I think the people watching this on YouTube later might get a little bit annoyed if I do. Um, and I'm quite sure the sound guys will get quite annoyed. Man, they're kind of scary. So welcome, PHP in 2013. Um, PHP surprisingly continues to evolve and uh, we have a whole bunch of new features. The lingering concerns people tend to have with PHP though nowadays is there's obviously a lot of legacy code out there. Um, a lot of it's very popular legacy code. Uh, for example, WordPress. Um, <laughs> I may be using the word legacy with some connotations beyond just old um, in that case. But obviously as PHP evolves and matures and we deprecate features that deserve to be deprecated and remove features after they're deprecated, one of the issues then is actually staying current. So in addition to talking about the new features, I'm going to touch a little bit on what's actually being removed and at least jump up and down for a minute or so about perhaps what you can do to help migrate your old code bases beyond the obvious answer of not using WordPress. So to talk about where we are now, we need to talk about where we were. So let's go back a long way in time, a long, long way in time to the dim distant past of 2009. We released PHP 5.3 at this point, which introduced a whole bunch of just really minor features like namespaces and anonymous functions and a whole bunch of other stuff, and we probably called it the wrong thing. So there was no real defined support lifetime for PHP releases at that time. Some release branches lasted for a long time, like 5.2 and 5.3 and 4.3 had. Some like 5.1 and 5.0 lasted barely a year before new releases came out. Which meant that uh, you either had to be subscribed to the internals mailing list and on the right channel, IRC channels, to figure out what was actually happening in the world of PHP, or you just had to sort of guess and hope for the best. And that seemed to be what most people were doing. So at the time, there was no real plan for 5.4 either. So the following year, um, one of our developers generated this lovely and now completely inaccurate ASCII chart as part of a proposal to define how we were actually going to release and handle new releases of PHP. And the general gist was that we, starting with 5.4, we would start releasing a, putting out a release each year and we would then support that release for two years with a following one year extended support period for security fixes. We also introduced a voting process for new features so that they would actually be voted on by core developers um, and a whole RFC phase basically during the pre-alpha and alpha phases of each release. Reasonably sensible and then we'd feature freeze we actually did do this for 5.4 and we're now in the middle of doing this for 5.5. It obviously doesn't apply to 5.3 and I'll come back to that. So last year, again the dim distant past that I don't remember at all, we released PHP 5.4 with the incredibly misleadingly titled feature traits, uh, which probably should have been called mix-ins in hindsight. Sorry about that. Um, object support and anonymous functions. We got rid of register globals, magic quotes, a whole bunch of other things that needed to get, get removed. That year, we have two problems. The first is, it turns out we're actually not very good at reading calendars. Um, according to the calendar and the annual release process thing, 5.5 should have been out um, either late last year or about now. And we haven't even had a beta yet. We're at alpha four at the moment of 5.5. <coughs> so that's kind of one challenge. I think we may have to make it 18 monthly release instead of 12 monthly because it just doesn't seem like we can do 12 monthly. Um, the other issue is what do we do with PHP 5.3? Um, out of interest, who in this audience is actually deploying onto PHP 5.3? Older versions? Newer versions? You can put your hand down. Um, 
Yeah, so 5.3 is by far the most common release seemingly now for new deployments of code. There's still plenty of code running on older versions, but older versions aren't supported. The problem, of course, is at some point we really actually 5.3. At the moment, for people committing code to PHP, we have now have four branches that we actually have to merge fixes onto. It's starting to get a little bit unwieldy. So at some point, we'd like to get rid of it. So we decided to have a vote in the spirit of our newfound love of bureaucracy, um, which we ended up with this matrix. I don't actually understand what most of this means, but I apparently still voted. The long story short is that the end of full support of PHP 5.3, so in terms of bug fixes and feature additions and things like that, at the same time as PHP 5.5 is going to be released. I don't know when PHP 5.5 is going to be released, so I can't actually give you much of a date. After that date, there will be one year of security fixes only for PHP 5.3, and then at least from the mainline perspective, PHP 5.3 will be end of life. Now, of course, many of you are running distributions that have PHP 5.3 packages. I'm sure, as per usual, the maintainers will backport fixes as, as and when required. The good news is, though, that the distros are actually moving quite a bit quicker than they used to. So, <laughs> Debian Wheezy has 5.4. Has it actually has quite a recent version of 5.4. Ubuntu 12.10, about the same. Red Hat 6 is running PHP 5.3.3, which, if memory serves me correctly, was released in November 2009. Somebody remind me when Red Hat 6 was actually released. Anyone? Anyone? I believe it was late 2011. Somebody can correct me on that. I'm not quite sure what happened there, um, and I don't really want to ask. And if there are any Red Hat developers in the room, please come and see me later for your complimentary tongue lashing. <laughs> the bad news is, that obviously old code, code bases have some issues with removed and deprecated features, as I said. PHP is trying to evolve slowly in an attempt not to break old code. I mean, PHP 4 code generally worked fine up to 5.3, but it's starting to change now. Register globals got removed, magic quotes got removed, and so on. My first piece of advice is just like write some unit tests. It's actually amazing how well that works. Um, the product I work on at the moment at work it was built against 5.4. We've been able to migrate it and test against 5.5 and actually have some confidence bec already because of the fact that we've actually got test coverage. Beyond that, I would suggest at least updating to stable branches regardless of your distros. OK, this is mostly for the Red Hat users. Um, <coughs> at least try and track what people are current stable branch, if you at all can. Um, all the major distros have repositories available. Uh, Ubuntu's got a PPA, Debian, there's a, a repository you can add. Red Hat, there's one as well. We can get the current stable PHP version. And in most of those cases, certainly all of those cases, it's actually maintained by the same person who does the PHP packages anyway. So you're getting the exact same thing. You're just getting more bug fixes, more security fixes, and so on. So back to 2013 once again, PHP 5.5 is coming hopefully second quarter-ish, maybe. There are a whole bunch of new features. So back in the day, if you wanted to write a simple numeric iterator, so that you did, that's actually the amount of code you had to write to basically re-implement X, Python's X range function. Um, you can, however, in 5.5, through the magic of generators, rewrite it as that. So the yield keyword is the key one there. Um, it's basically, it works the same way as Python, for those who are familiar with that. Each time, when you run this function, you basically get internally an iterator object, and then each time you iterate over that object, when it hits the yield statement, it returns the next value in the fake array. And you can use it like so. So you can actually for each over it, and control just passes back and forward between the generator function and the main execution. And you get the output that you would expect there. So the low value is 1, the high value is 9, and we're going to step 2 each time. And it actually outputs that. Um, so the main advantage of this really is that for simple iterators, which is probably 80% of the use cases, you don't have to write all of this boilerplate that you can see there. I mean, most of that is literally just boilerplate. It's 
pointless. For a forward only iterator, why would you write all of that when you can just do that? Um, thank you, Python people, for giving us the features, Nick. PHP also now includes support. So for a common use case for this was um, if you create a temporary file, you obviously, well, if you need a named temporary file in PHP, you have to call the temp name function. The temp name function gives you the, a string which has a file name that you can then use as a temporary file. The problem with the temp name function is that unlike make s temp or whatever the, or temp file or whatever the other function's called, it doesn't automatically remove the file, the temporary file, when you're done, which is a really, really good way of finding out what the number, what the limits are in your file system on the number of directories in slash temp. Um, so before PHP 5.5, you could actually fake this by using object destructors. You could create a temporary file object, and then when that went out of scope at the end of the method, it would then call the destructor which would unlink the file, because PHP is primarily reference counted. That actually worked. The syntax, however, is kind of horrifying. Um, besides the fact that you've got business logic, this um, object that you've created at the top of the function, which in effect, you then never do anything with again. So you have to actually know that it has a destructor to know how the behavior works. So like most sane languages, that we now simply support a finally block on try-catch statements. This is, unsurprisingly, a hell of a lot cleaner. There's also another little bit of syntactic sugar. You can now directly unpack arrays in for each's or nested arrays in for each's. So instead of having that separate list statement, you now just this actually works pretty well. Password hashing. So for the, I've done this talk, this is the third time I think I've done it at um, LCA, and I've done a variant of this at OSDC, and each time I've jumped up and down about how everybody does password hashing wrong and that you should just be using the crypt function in PHP. The crypt function in PHP works really, really well in 5.3 and onwards. It supports bcrypt, it supports all the secure SHA variants, you know, it does key stretching, it does all of the things that you really want in a password hashing system. All of this is wrapped up in an API that I believe was developed in the late 70s, early 80s, and kind of looks like it. Because one of the classic mistakes that people make, who can tell me what the problem with this line of code is? besides the fact that foo is not a very good password. Anyone want to have a crack? Okay. So 2a means that it's a, the, ha the salt, 2a means that it's a blowfish hash, or a bcrypt hash, I should say, that we're requesting. bcrypt requires a 22 character salt from a particular character set after the second dollar sign. There are only, there are only 21 characters there. Now, you would probably expect that a sensible function would return false or throw an exception or return null or really obviously signal an error state. Instead, crypt will return this. That is actually an invalid password hash. You won't ever be able to verify that hash. But apparently that's actually an error state because it's less than, well, I think it is 13 characters. So to use crypt correctly, you actually have to check the length of the return value. Somewhere along the line, it was realized that that is actually sort of insane. So in PHP 5.5, we are adding a new extension which provides four functions which are listed there. Password hash, password verify, password get info, and password needs rehash. These functions internally don't do anything other than call crypt. They just they do the exact same thing as before as you would do with crypt. The difference is that the API is actually human readable. I also hope it will prove to be human writable. So the new version is that to create a password hash, you have this password hash function. Password default is a constant that's been defined in PHP, which will basically be the best password hashing algorithm we have available in that version. At the moment, that's bcrypt. It may at some point tell it doesn't get broken before then, eventually it might end up being S-script. Um, but the idea is that that's an implementation detail that you don't actually need to think much about as an application developer. You use password default and PHP will do the right thing for you. You can then verify a password by using password verify. 
I'm not going to go into the other functions mostly because I'm already running hideously out of time, but there is documentation for this already in the manual, so I can highly suggest going and having a look at that. There is also a compatibility library on GitHub for PHP 5.3.7 and later if you would like to start using this now. Um, if you, I'm not going to put the URL up because I know I never get I know I can never copy down URLs from talks, so presumably it's the same for most other people. If you search for password underscore compat on Google, it should be the first hit. Um, I actually added this slide after Steve and uh, Katie's talk earlier when they were talking about the fact that date time is mutable in PHP, which is true, and it's a horrible misfeature. We did actually add a class called date time immutable in PHP 5.5, which basically does what their code did. Thank God. There are some backward incompatibilities in PHP 5.5. Um, I don't think this will affect anyone here, but just on the off chance that you know somebody is unfortunate enough for this to be an issue, Windows XP and 2003 support have been dropped. <laughs> the one that's probably bigger is case, in case insensitivity. So PHP, up until now, has folded has case insensitive method and function names for reasons that have long since been lost in the mists of time. This of course makes complete sense in a language where the variable names are case sensitive. <laughs> it turned out that of course A, case insensitivity isn't actually such a good idea to start with, but B, doing it on a locale specific basis because you're using the native C libraries to lower and to upper functions is really not a good idea. Because the problem is that not every language actually has this folding behaviour. So, in most languages, the uppercase version of that I is capital I, and the lowercase version of that capital I is lowercase I. In Turkish and Azeri, on the other hand, it actually works like this. The lowercase I with a dot becomes an uppercase I with a dot, and the, lower, and the uppercase I without a dot becomes a lowercase I without a dot. So, say you're calling a method called last insert ID. converts all the method and function names to lowercase, like so. Unfortunately, of course, if you're writing your code and your server is running in the Turkish locale, what you actually have is that. <laughs> it doesn't work. So, what we've done in PHP 5.5 is that I apologise, there was meant to be another slide there. What's happening in PHP 5.5 is that case folding is now being done purely in ASCII. So the potential incompatibility here, besides the fact that I guess now if you're a Turkish user, your code will actually now work. Um, <laughs> the other potential incompatibility here is that if you have a non-English code base with method names with accented characters or Cyrillic characters or something like that, and you were relying on that case folding behaviour, it may not work anymore. Um, for mo um, a couple of the core developers did actually have a quick look at some code that was, you know, did some code searches on, on you know, GitHub and various other sites and came to the conclusion that it doesn't seem to be a problem in practice, but that's probably the big backward, in backward compatibility break in PHP 5.5. It's going to, the old behaviour caused some really awesome uh, highs and bugs. The new behaviour is going to cause a whole new set of highs and bugs. It's going to be terrific. Deprecated features. The old. <laughs> <laughs> the old MySQL extension will now generate messages like that if, you, if and when you attempt to use it. Um, it does still work, but the intention is that it will be removed in 5.6, so please start using MySQLi or PDO. Preferably PDO, unless you work for Oracle, in which case they'd like you to use MySQLi. They also like suing Google, so, you know, what do they know? I'm really rushing here. Uh, PREG Replace used to support, a, or still does support, a slash E modifier. What this actually does internally is it takes your replacement uh, string and evals it. Let me be very clear here, the problem in this is the eval. Because we all know that eval is evil. So this is actually a really good way for malware writers to implicitly run arbitrary code. So that's now deprecated. Trying to do this will generate deprecation warnings. The correct behaviour is really to use preg replace callback and just use an anonymous function instead, which is much safer than, than having eval be run internally. 
So when is all of this going to happen? So as I said, in theory it should have been about last month. Um, in practice we're currently at alpha 4 of PHP 5.5. It would be a really good time, um, particularly in the next month, because beta 1 should be out fairly soon, it would be a really good time for people to start testing their code bases against it, to run the test suite, send results to us so that we can try and make 5.5 a really solid release and not have eight release candidates like we did for 5.4. Because honestly, after about release candidate four, it gets really old. Um, the hope at this stage, I think, is probably that we're talking second quarter, as I think I said earlier. The key to remember is that's also the point where PHP 5.3 will end its main support life cycle and go to security fixes only. So. Keep an eye out for the announcement about PHP 5.5 if you're running a 5.3 code base because it's actually kind of important for you as well. I believe I have approximately 10 seconds for, for questions. We started late, so you can, <laughs> we can uh, take a bit longer than that. So, okay. uh, so I'll take that mic off you if you can use the lectern mic. That'd be Certainly. Fantastic. Anybody got any questions? Oh, that's really, really disappointing, guys. <laughs> I believe Zaf has some trolling. Is this a question or a troll, Zaf? <laughs> Excellent. Did you happen to notice the uh, user who decided that Register Globals was still a good idea and submitted this wonderful little piece of code base you could throw in that re-implemented said feature after you removed it? Yes, um, I believe, in actual fact, if I pull up last year's presentation, I've written that piece of code. Um, <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure I actually had it on one of my slides that you can run extract underscore get underscore post and you've just re-implemented register globals. Um, my favourite actual deprecated feature workaround. Um, are there any WordPress developers in the room, just out of interest, like core WordPress developers? That's a shame. Can somebody just like tweet them later? Um, so WordPress was developed in the era of magic quotes and we removed magic quotes in PHP 5.4. WordPress actually now has a piece of code that if you have magic quotes disabled on your server or you're running to a newer version of PHP, it will actually walk over and munge the, super, the get, post and request super globals and reapply magic quotes by calling add slashes. This is possibly one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in a mainstream framework. And that was probably my favourite piece of, piece of code. It makes the register globals emulation just look harmless. So, any more questions for Adam? Uh, well, in which case, uh, please thank oh, Adam thanks. for his talk. Oh, wait, one more question. <laughs> wait, wait, Thomas. I should look harder <laughs> next time. Can you remind me, is this an odd LCA or an even LCA? <laughs> <laughs> Explanations for that one will be at the pub later, I'm sure. <laughs> or in the ambulance afterwards. <laughs> Anyone else? So, any actual questions? We will take more heckles <laughs> or trolls after the talk. In the meantime, please thank Adam for his talk. Thank you.